Okay, so you're working with your pendant. Um, I have this one that we made the other day in copper, and I'm going to make a decision about what kind of pendant. Um, as far as my jump ring goes, I would probably never use actually a silver jump ring on a copper pendant. I just think it looks kind of cheesy. I would probably make a jump ring out of copper or some other kind of more vintage looking That's what I would do. wire. That's yeah. So, um, knowing that this is the pendant that I'm working with, I have to make some decisions about beads, and I have to kind of make some aesthetic decisions about what I think is pretty and what I think is not. Um, this is a small pendant. It already has a large center of focus on it, so I'm not sure that I'm really interested in making a whole lot of really long things dangle from it. This was a different scenario. This is the pendant that we made out of brass with the other class, and I put a, um, a pendant with beads on that because it didn't seem to bother me that I was covering up the background so much. You're choosing something that's going to go with your metal. Like I had looked originally at some turquoise for this because I tend to like turquoise with brass. It's opposite on the color wheel. I had originally looked at some metallic things to go with it because I kind of liked that effect as well. And in the end, I pick. I ended up wanting to pick up the distress from the patina, the, the ammonia oxidizing, and I did that by using these hematite beads. Now when you're choosing to hang beads on a I think I should use this on a pendant, you have to make a decision about how you're going to arrange them. So let's get our pendant ready to go and we'll go from there. Now there are a couple kinds of wraps that you can do. Some are neater than others. And I kind of like a messy wrap, especially if I'm going with something, you know, very vintage and ethnic like that. I don't think I want any perfect kind of wrap. So I'm going to give myself quite a bit of a wire in order to give me lots of wrapping extra. Need my round nose pliers. And I'm going to decide where to put my bend depending on how much extra I want to wrap around. Now where you're gripping the plier here is going to determine how big of a loopy doop thing you have at the top. So if you're dealing with delicate piece, you don't want this ginormous, you know, quarter inch loop thing on it. You probably want something smaller. My piece is pretty small here, so I'm going to do a pretty small loop. Once I make my first bend, I have to make a decision about my jump ring. <laughs> if my jump ring is so awesome that I really don't want to bother it ever again, then I could actually put my jump ring on right now and form the pendant around it, clip it on there, and then go after my wrap with it depending on how much you like your jump ring. This jump ring I am not married to because I don't even like the color of it. And so if I, I'm not going to worry about opening it and shutting it again. So I start with my round plier holding the end. Your first instinct might to be to separate it and twist it like you do a twisty tie on bread. And that's not going to look as attractive as a regular wrap. You're going to take your wrapping end around the stem end. So this is always going to stay steady, steady and straight. And you're going to wrap this one around it. So you're going to grip really hard so it doesn't twist on you. Start pushing it around just the way you did when you were making your jump ring. A nice neat coil that follows one after the other without being tilted, without being twisted, without a lot of space in between. And that one's actually got too much space. I might even close that space up a little bit with squeezing. Too much space. It's poorly done. Is that how you do the earrings too? Mm -hmm. You're going to put your, so your ear attached. Like. Yeah. So now once I've got a few good ones, um, now I'm ready to make the messy part, and so I'll just kind of go back up over it and let it be fat and kind of messy. I just like that, the way that looks. But you may not. You may be a tight and tidy kind of person, and so you want it to have... Now, your end cannot stick out like that. It's going to snag on your sweater or snag on whatever. I, uh, give it a quick feel. Make sure it's plenty smooth. If and it's then not... Just trim it off. No, you want to tuck it. You need to tuck. <laughs> So I'm feeling it's got a little bit of a rough edge, so I am going to actually file that edge so it doesn't get caught on somebody's nice Angora wrap or whatever, I don't know, just to make sure. And I will feel your wire ends when I judge your, you know, when I'm looking at your pieces, I'm going to feel them. And i got to tuck him in to make sure he's not sticking out there and being annoying and catching on stuff. I'll use my bent nose pliers to do that, or even the straight nose ones. And you just have to kind of keep coaxing him around the corner by mashing him in. Mash, 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 mash. There we go. Exactly. All right. Now, my uh, loopy thingy is a little crazy. 
and this wire is not too bad but a lot of the craft wire is too flexible and bends all over the place so I'm actually going to pound it a little bit to harden it without mashing my little wrap that I did so I'm going to put it up on like the edge of the dapping block and just get the edges of it a little bit kind of give it some strength feels like what's the point but it really does make a difference and then dap it yeah. that's what I'm doing now this is dapping <laughs> okay so that should be stronger now that's good now I'm gonna have to make some decisions about my beads um, copper might look cool with this uh, too purple I don't know too purple I don't like that very much we got beads now turquoise and really, I, I don't like the way that's, that dot is in the way. It's okay, Holdy. Ooh, okay, now that's not bad. I feel like that's not competing with my dot so much. It's just a little clear bead, very innocent looking. I generally don't like a single bead all by itself, so now I'm going to pick a smaller, what we call a seed bead, something very tiny to use as an accent with it. Um, I picked an orange one or like a gray clear one. Uh, it's more purple. If I had two beads, let's say, for some reason I wanted two, and I had a big one, little one, a small one, to hang them like this might not be your best option. Why? It's ugly. It's ugly. Off. It looks like a badly made Christmas ornament. You know what I mean? I like one of those cool. dorky ones from the 60s. <laughs> Usually, you want the heaviest bead, the largest bead, to be weighted at the bottom so that it has a nice, uh, more triangular effect, so that so looks a little more, more balanced, yeah. Um, I'm going to start out with a circular thingy, and I'm going to go to my little clear bead, and that's really, I think that's all I want. That's very small, but like I said, I'm competing with this other thingy here. I don't want to... And two options for the ends, and you can do either way first. Lots of times I actually work from the bottom up because then I can wrap as much as I want around here. But in this case, I'm working from the top down. I'm going to use my flat cut. There are lots of ways to end. I could actually make another loop at the bottom to connect something else. I could just make the loop because I think the loop is pretty. I tend to like this method where I do a little bit of a J curve, right? And then I'm going to close it the rest of the way with my needle, my bent nose. Squeeze them in there. And then... I like to smoosh it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that looks cool. That. Without smashing my bead. Now, have, oh. I have on occasion mashed a bead or two, and it's such such a sad thing because you like the bead, number one. But when you flatten it, it widens it. It's going to keep it from going through the hole. <laughs> yeah. I already did. Well, don't smash the bead if you can help it. I heard that's good for it. You heard that's good for the beef? When you mash it in a million pieces? All right, it's there. Okay, straighten it all out when you're done. Attach it to your jump ring. Remember, we always turn jump rings on the diagonal. Throw it on there. That's not too bad. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay?